What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob with my friend Daniel here. I think you guys might know him. <laughs> I think you guys know this guy. Um, Daniel, why don't you say hello? How are you? Glad to be <laughs> hanging out, man. This is yeah. uh, this is cool. But, uh, I'm going to try to stay out of reading the comments, or should I be reading the comments? I think... We'll, you know what? We'll try to read some, and I'll I'll post like the ones that are like kind of appropriate and funny. Right. <laughs> like there's one already that's pretty decent. I'm gonna go with Daniel, but you guys can draw your own conclusions. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's the only reason. It's it's definitely Rob uh, because if he wanted to, that thing could be a beast. Oh, that yeah. just means that you're very serious about trimming. See, mine, like, you can see skin. Th like, this is the, the beard version of a comb over <laughs> com compared, to, compared to Rob's beard. <laughs> Let's Honestly, pour some whiskey first, though. What are we, what are we drinking first? Yeah, we're, talking, we're talking a little bit about Canadian whiskey tonight. Um, mm -hmm. too, honestly, when I started, and the reason why I wanted – you to chat with me about these is because when I started getting into Shelter Point and two brewers for that matter, mm -hmm. um, I I watched a few of your videos and you guys had already done quite a few videos on Shelter Point and I was like, where the hell have I been? <laughs> like I'm in yeah. Canada, I don't know anything about these guys. So um, this is relatively new for me and obviously I've been doing my homework. I have yeah. a few on the table. I have a few more on the way. I really was hoping to have the Smoke Point tonight, um, which is. There's a Shelter Point single malt aged in the Freud barrels. Right. Uh, didn't get a chance to get that one. I we haven't drank these since we reviewed them. So, but my memory is that we really liked every single one we tried. Yeah. So, so far, the videos that I've watched of yours, which you guys should all go watch if you haven't already, um, you seem to really like them. So, and even Rex, who. I don't know if he's got a bias against Canadian whiskey yeah. or. <laughs> no, I'll, get, I'll mentioning that. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you context that because I do the same thing. But uh, so at Wizard Academy, the business school, for some reason, we've gotten really popular with Canadians, and so about twenty to twenty-five percent of our student base is Canadians. Oh wow! Who That's... fly down to Austin for the Wizard Academy, and so awesome. we have a long-standing ball-busting relationship. <laughs> <laughs> with with all of our Canadian friends. And so any chance we get to poke fun and they poke fun at us in Texas, we just sort of, it's part of the water we swim in down here. Makes sense. I, I remember that connection you had with uh, a guy that I had the at my house the day that you came on my channel the last time, uh, mm. Vito. I remember you guys are always busting his balls too. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. No, any, that that's, that's how Texans roll, man. If you can't take the dry, straight face, ball busting you're not gonna really last long in texas <laughs> by the way shelter point so you're starting with which one just the malt or um the artisanal single malt uh okay. six percent, no added color until filtered these are about five to seven years old from what i from the research i've done <laughs> uh, oh, nice. hey, asking if i'm wearing decorative glasses I, I had a funny feeling that question was gonna come up tonight um Actually, because of all the screen time, thanks to COVID, I actually have a prescription, unfortunately, and ah. they have they have the blue lens in them too. Uh, so, because I'm I'm a teacher by trade, so um, I'm on screen all day now. Oh of, Jesus, yeah. Anyway, hey, did uh, they cheat? You, did they show you the trick to these? I thought the, I hated these quirks until the one guy one time was like, "Well, you just do this. You just pop with your thumb, and it comes out instantly." Oh, wow. And I was I like, son of a bitch. I spent months trying to like yank on these things. I can't get a grip. And no, the guy was like, no, what are you doing? Dude, you're just there, done. Oh, that's awesome. No, I have no idea. <laughs> I still didn't know that. I'm going to have to try that later on. Um, and we got another one over here. We got Eric White. Uh, wait, you know it. Oh, wait, one. yeah. About <laughs> Dude, don't even ask about the temperature, Eric. Like, he's hassling me. Where, what is it where you're at right now? Uh, it's Rob, one. Yeah. Oh, what's your temp? We, it's uh, minus. It was minus seven or eight today. Okay, so twenty degrees Fahrenheit, roughly speaking. Um, here it's currently zero Celsius, but it's supposed to 
get down uh, this week in the next two days. It's supposed to get down to like negative 16, negative 15 Celsius. That's crazy. That's pretty cool, right? Can I get some credit here for being a little chilly right now? The Albertans and, and some of the, the two brewers is from the, the Yukon. They, they're laughing at us. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but any, yeah, of course they are. But, um, but yeah, no, that's cool for me, man. I well, mean, but anybody in the Yukon and Alaska, you know what's the joke about Alaska? Uh, you know, there's always a running commentary that Alaskans are going to cut their state in two just so that they can make Texas the third largest state. <laughs> So they love to hassle us anyway. So we might as well. Ooh. Ooh, that's really nice. These are pretty, man. Honestly, like everybody that I've let try. Um, by the way, if you guys are looking for some Shelter Point tonight, uh, there's a promo code for Shelter Point, Whiskey6. That's it. No uh, no E, uh, the British way. Whiskey6 um, at liquorlodge.ca. So um, Liquor Lodge. That is Whiskey six, 10% off. This reminds me of the direction of like a Deanston where you get that really explosion of fruit. And then you get, then you get that sort of like grassy, uh, like what's the word I'm looking for? Honeysuckle kind of yeah. like melon type thing. I get, honestly, dude, you just nailed it. Melon, like, uh, like cantaloupe, like honeydew. Like yeah, honeydew like melon. Yeah, uh, Jeremy's. He was supposed to be here tonight, but he had to work, so um, he's gonna have to sh sip some Shelter Point when he gets home. He said, uh, "Dustin, thank you very much." <laughs> I, 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 that must be an inside joke. I don't. I don't know. That what one. kind of grain is a grape? <laughs> I thought grapes were a nut. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always put in the package. It's grape nut cereal, right? Aren't they nuts? That's true. <laughs> so. I do have, um, I'm going to mention that promo code again later. Um, I get nothing for it. So just in case you guys think I'm advertising hey, it. Take a sip of yours. Did you get a little bit of like a almost smoky bite to the end of that? And that's only 46%. Yeah, there is something there for sure. What is that? I wonder if that's the, just the barrel. I, I wonder if he was, it's not peated, is it? No, they it's don't. almost they salty. So salty, yes, and and they're they're quick to say. I hope you guys get some salt out of our whiskey because oh. where they are, it's coastal, right? It's um, oh, okay, yeah. It's, it's been so long since I tried it. I was trying to come into the night blind, but I yeah. didn't remember where they were located. Yeah, so you know what? I think like the smoke that you're getting is so much like so so many times I kind of mistake like brininess for smokiness just because we're so right. used. Most of the smoky type whiskeys have that brininess kind of thing, right? So, uh, they yeah. distribute to the U.S. I don't think they do. Yet. I don't know if they do. The reason I have these bottles is because Teresa Smith, who's one of our psalms and a badass Canadian uh, woman, uh, brought us Shelter Point bottles specifically, and a bunch. She really likes Shelter Point and has done stuff with them. I think. And um, so I think all of the Shelter Points I have are because of her. Um. Oh, okay, yeah, British Columbia. That makes more sense. The Camel River. Now I remember it's up in like the little tributary areas of the west coast, north of Vancouver, right? Yeah. So they're yeah. like Vancouver Island. It's like these guys are doing everything grain to glass. Like they they have their own farm. They're farming their own barley. Really, really cool stuff coming. Out. Honestly, like I'm really disappointed in myself for not discovering these guys earlier. But I I gave like I tried it started like dabbling with them when covid hit right and yeah i fell in love man honestly I, I, like my my friends joke with me saying basically like oh, oh you like shelter point <laughs> <laughs> oh well, well basically all i've been talking about for like months um but yeah no i like, I like it um but i did want to ask you a couple questions tonight. I don't, yep. let me just quickly see what uh our friend brandon here is saying uh big fan of the channel love it. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Cheers, buddy. That's cool. Um, you guys are making whiskey down in Texas. You guys have your own yeah. distill. So yeah. What is what is the what is your favorite kind of whiskey to make? Like, are you are you dabbling more into the bourbon style or do you? No, we 
we don't have a ton of experience in that yet um, because we've been sourcing for the first three years. So uh, like 80, 90% of what we were releasing was MGP. Yeah. And it's, um, or some version of MGP. We've released a ton of, uh, in the, we, we did the first independent bottling of Texas whiskey in Texas with our Crowded Barrel Alliance. And so we were releasing a bunch of other Texas distilleries. So, you know, Balconis and Andalusia and Treaty and Real and, you know, everybody. Um, yeah. Because we love, we're friends with those guys. And we love everything they do. Um, we only started, we started making our stuff about a year and a half, two years ago. And it was only malt. Um, and it's what everybody voted on. So all we made up until about three months ago was 100% Maris Otter barley, sometimes peated, sometimes not. Sometimes, a few times we pulled in Baird's peated malt and mixed it in. Okay. Um, what we usually did was we took our Maris Otter, took our bags down to Andalusia, used their peat shed and burned peat in a peat shed and peated our own barley and then brought it back. And then we were doing all of this on a 25 gallon still. So, so it took us like six weeks to fill a small barrel, to fill a barrel, right? It's like, this is not scalable. So we're <laughs> upgrading on this still. And at the same, same time, we wanted to try to get into a bourbon, but we don't have any of the material to handle what happens when you try to screw around with corn because it just sticks to everything, right? And so it's not there's all these, yeah, it's not as friendly as bar barley, you know, you can off grain and pull things. It's just, but corn's a nightmare. And so um, you just have to know what you're doing and have to have all the right equipment. We didn't have any of that yet. Still don't. So we reached out to Balconis who offered to create a mash bill for us that our people voted on. And they did. And it's, it's a corn that's a weed, it's a bourbon that's a weeded bourbon. Nice. And um, with white corn, uh, I think it's Texas winter wheat. Uh, I'm going from memory and I'm not entirely anyway. Um, and a small percentage of barley. And then they fermented it. And then they did the first stripping run to create the low wines. Okay. And then they sent us the low wines. Okay. So we, uh, Emma has been taking the low wines and doing our spirit run. And then we're putting it in the barrels. And as a matter of fact, she's been doing that for two months and or a month and a half i guess and we're about to fill our first 53 gallon new oak barrel with this weeded bourbon oh, so wow. the very first one ever so it's a two char isc barrel and uh we'll see once the full size still comes in we'll be able to do a barrel a week so that's a whole new ball game um, but we plan to do a whole bunch of stuff that, and this idea of sourcing low wines is so cool to me for a baby distillery because it lets us bypass a lot of the choke points of baby distilleries and just go straight to strip uh, heart runs, you know, spirit. Runs. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you, so that's are it. Doing, are you doing the two char because of the, like the heat you're worried about losing too much? Evaporation? Yeah, we're doing two char and we're doing, um, so, so the trick, everybody, most people are trying to buy, to get out of time and, and with, and like the, the small guys are trying to figure out how to get whiskey faster. Not all. I mean, I don't say most. That's a trend. How do I get through this quicker? Hey, first of all, his no. videos are so beautiful. He's awesome. Like they're just beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I'm lucky I came in when I did because if I didn't, I would be lost. <laughs> like, oh, all yeah, these yeah. know exactly what to do. Doing so good, yeah. Um. Anyway, they um. In Texas, our biggest problem is trying to keep whiskey in the barrel longer. Like, because the wood impact, because, you know, whiskey in small barrels doesn't age faster. But I hate it when people say that. It, you don't cheat time. It's not possible. Um, right. So you put whiskey in a five gallon. You can't create 10-year-old whiskey in one year. That's bullshit. Yeah. Well, because, you know, there's like 30 things happening in a chart over time with a barrel, right? And when you shrink the barrel size, you ramp up some of them, but you don't touch the others. And so what happens is you get to the point with the wood where you really need to get that whiskey out. But the other things that you needed aren't there yet. Yeah. And so that's a hard problem in Texas. And we've, we've all been trying to solve it with various things. Um, used oak, that buys us some time. Um, a lower char 
changes some things and buys us a little bit of different things. It doesn't actually do less. It's a, anyway, that's really nerdy. Um, but, or uh, lower proof entry. So instead of going in at 125 and pulling wood tannins, we're dropping, we're dropping in at 115 or 110. And so it buys us a little more time with pulling sugars instead of tannins faster. And so, yeah, that's why we're going with that to see. Yeah, absolutely. To, and, you know, some guys are trying to get bigger barrels instead of 53. Okay. Just to lower the wood to spirit ratio and see if that buys them some time. Yeah, I can see um, that one. Yeah, I mean, so. Yeah, that, I mean, you, it's in one way a blessing, but in another way it's a curse, right? Because the heat yeah. definitely uh, helps, I find, the, um, I mean, Texas whiskey at two years old is already awesome. But right. I mean, we're starting to we're starting to find that with other brand, other whiskey. Like the reason why we never tried a two or three year old Scotch and like didn't really know what a really good two year, two or three year old Scotch. Well, three, two mm -hmm. year old Scotch doesn't actually exist. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but three, the point the point stands. Yeah, uh, they didn't do it. They just didn't do it. They never. They waited mm -hmm. till you know it was ten years old at least for the most part yeah. or seven. Uh, if it was a noise statement or whatever. Um, so now we're finding out that those can be damn good. And like, yeah. young, it can be damn good. Yeah, your Colomans or your, you know, I got the King's Barn, that the story in San Ed. Uh, ever, I was one of their people who signed on early to try to get stuff. And so I think getting their stuff as a new make and then they're three year old now. And it's beautiful. It's definitely young, right? It tastes malt forward and granola and grainy. But it's also a fruit explosion and kind of, yeah. So like right now we're about, we're, we're getting ready to try to release some of our first malt that we did in five gallon barrels. And son of a bitch, if it's not like three times as dark as this. Oh, I believe it. And yeah. it's eight, it's eight and a half months old. And when you taste it, it's beautiful. Uh, it's just a honey fruit bomb. Wow. Um, but it's also very malty because... It, they, just haven't, they haven't had time to settle, you know, and it also has a really tannic finish. Okay. Because of the, so yeah, it's, it's just a no, thing. I, yeah. I wonder, so it has to be two years old to officially be a whiskey, right? In, in, no, it, no, no. Actually in the U S there's no timeline for oh, how long you need to age something. Okay. Unless right. it's straight or, right. you know, bottled in bond. Um, but you can call bourbon a bourbon, you know, after 15 minutes in a barrel. Oh, wow. Uh, like, there's literally like the code says must be aged in oak, right? Barrels. But but it doesn't say you no, know, it doesn't say for how long. And so so technically, like we were we were Rex and I were talking about doing this forever, just like pouring a new make into a barrel and then pouring it out the other side, like the length of a song, you know? <laughs> And so it's totally just new make. And then that line we're gonna call technically bourbon. And then and then that'll be the ad on the back is like a shoulder shrug. It's like technically it's bourbon. <laughs> right. But just to call attention to how, how funny that and then while we you know took forever to do it, Pabst Blue Ribbon released that whiskey that was like aged fifteen minutes or something like that. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Too late. Jason from the Mash and Drum was uh, sipping that last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> didn't like it too much. I don't know anything about it, but no, it's it's, a... it's not magical. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Do you um, want to try the um? You want to try the the cask strength one that's their rye and grain one? Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. So, let's do you, do you know when they say single grain spirit? Does that mean they're doing a column still on that one? The way that a Scotland would describe a grain spirit. I think so I honestly I don't know. I, I'm not gonna I don't know. Um man if Whiskey Smith, if can Canadian Whiskey Smith is in the house, she would know all the answers to these questions. She's serious what, about they have some sheltered point guys in the chat. Um I would Oh yeah, maybe they can answer. If uh if Jacob, oh, your web I, start, I started trying to open it again the hard way instead of just you know what? My my favorite way to do it is I just like get my thumb skin like right under the Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was trying to do. But now that you learned the thumb pop, it's so much easier. Yeah, yeah, definitely gotta do the thumb pop more often. Yeah, Waterford, everybody's doing these glass corks. I keep finding them in our 
tastings these days. We pull up another, I'm like, oh, another glass cork. I think they're very pretty. Waterford's another example of a young distillery. Oh, yeah. Doing awesome stuff. Good night. Yeah, honestly, like, so this, actually, I kind of wanted to bring this up a little bit to you. Um, I had some questions prepared, but I never end up following what I wrote. <laughs> I wrote that. Um, it's just in case I panic and I have to look at something. Um, right. The the trend right now, like with how like the secondary market with bourbon and stuff like that, with all these distilleries popping up and all these distilleries pumping out really good stuff at young ages. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the recipe of like a market being, I don't want to call it saturated, but like, um, like definitely more, um, less, less, I guess we can say, uh, the demand will be met a little bit easier. Maybe not for, maybe not for like your, you know, Pappy Van Winkles and, and, and that sort of right. stuff. But, right. Um, I'm, I'm starting to wonder like what's going to happen with the secondary market on all this stuff just because. I mean, right now we're seeing you can walk into a store in the U.S. and Jeremy and I actually talk about this in our podcast that's coming out this week. Um, there's Buffalo Trace, like the regular Buffalo Trace, which is like what twenty five bucks, twenty bucks. Yeah, instead of yeah. So he he found a few stores that were selling that for like one hundred and eighty bucks to two hundred bucks, Good and like, it's happening. It's it, and it because. People are being convinced that there's like a shortage of this stuff. <laughs> and right. Yeah. I mean, people are always going to be gullible. There's never, there's never going to be, what is it? The the suckers born every minute. Yeah. Who was that? Wasn't that Barnum and Bait? Uh, was that Barnum? I, I, I don't know who says it's uh, No, it's just, no, it's, it's, you know, there's, there's always going to be those people. I, the saturation thing is interesting to me as far as like, I keep hearing whispers like, oh, there's going to be a collapse. Oh, there's going to be a collapse. And and I think it's bullshit. I think there will be a collapse of people who saw this as a shortcut to fame and fortune. But there's always a collapse of people who see something as a shortcut to fame and yeah. fortune, right? Exactly. That, that's not new uh, in any industry. Uh, it, it reminds me of the people who are like, oh, we've got eBooks now print is dead forever and it's like well that, that didn't actually happen but it's fine so uh or you know uh now that we have netflix no more movie theaters ever again it's like well no, that actually didn't happen either because so, like certain things meet certain needs and they always will and all that happens when a new thing enters is it solves the need that other thing wasn't meeting but it doesn't eliminate everything you know and so you know, yes, maybe market will shrink in different areas, but everything sort of will find its home and then it'll be for that. You know, like I, I don't like reading ebooks because I'm a, I like the tactile sensation, right? But son of a bitch, when I fly, you can't I see bring ebooks. You can't see oh, my yeah. show because of the. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> yeah no, I like that tactile, but when I fly, I do, a, I do Kindle because like I read really fast and. I hate one with like eight books, <laughs> right? I mean, it's yeah. just like, oh, this is lugging shit around. Right? So it meets the need that it meets. When I was in music, um, I, uh, doing professional music for about 18 years, I used to teach sometimes at colleges with for, uh, to the music department about how to make it an independent musician. And, and I'd always say the same thing, which I think is 100% true in whiskey right now, which is, like if you're in this room to get rich, there are far easier ways to get rich. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's probably, it's not going to happen. If you're in this room, cause you want to be famous, there are far better, faster and easier ways to get famous. Yeah. So if you got into music, so you can be rich and famous, then you are fucked. Yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah. if you are comfortable making a teacher salary, while playing music for a living, then you have never lived at a better time than now. And so I think the same thing is true of whiskey. Like if you want to be the next Pappy or you want to be the next, you know, fill in any blank, you know, yep. logable and like that odds are pretty, like we're too fractured as a market. Now the odds of, you know, that much energy getting behind one thing and putting them to the top again is it's pretty slim. It'll happen here or there, but there'll be anomalies, black spawns. You can't, hang your hat on that yeah but and you if you want to get rich by god don't start a whiskey distillery jesus <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a terrible idea but 
if you want to do something you truly love and make things for other people who will truly love it and just have a reasonable living yeah. and work your ass off to just like every other damn human on the planet, then by God, this is your time. Yeah. Right. Honestly, I think that you nailed it. Like there's always going to be a place for a new distillery. Uh, there's always going to be a place for um, people making whiskey. What, where yeah. I feel the the change in the market will go is the secondary market. Like I, I don't see. I mean, I don't know anything about the secondary market. <laughs> it's it's, so. a, it's honestly it's brutal because it, it's causing these shortages that don't have to be shortages because what's happening is three guys walk into a liquor store and clear shelves. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's causing the shortage because if everybody took one or two then there'd be enough right. for it, you know what I mean? But that's not gonna happen. So that'd um, be that guy that went to the wedding and took all of the good desserts on the dessert table before the meal started getting served. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a bunch of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I, when, when every, when not everybody, not everybody's gonna ever like, it's not gonna be everybody making great whiskey, but when there's a whole bunch of really good whiskey, like distillery, I, what, like I think in the last four years, something like, 10 times the amount of distilleries that there were like four years ago. Oh yeah, years. and there, it'll keep going. Yeah, so I just, I feel like that portion of it will be gone. But I mean, um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think we ever have to worry about like there not being a place for certain types of whiskey or anything like that. I just, I was, I was leaning more towards the secondary, but then I guess, you know, uh, Jeremy and I focus a little too much on the secondary sometimes. So that's one of our- Yeah, that's, that's, I know, almost, I know absolutely nothing about it. It's a total mystery to me. Mm. I, I mean, yeah. I don't know what I would think going to a secondary market looking for other than the Longmore 16. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because yeah, they're, uh, yeah. But yeah. There's all, there will always be whatever. I mean, I think we kind of are saying the same thing. So uh, that's, yeah. I, the answer that I was hoping for anyway. Hey, um, tell me what you're finding on that. Cause there's, this to me is more craft. Like it has these notes that I always associate with craft, which is this like really grain forward, almost cut grass. Yes. Yeah. You know, you know? and yeah. it smells young and honey. Whereas the other one had a depth to it that I really loved. This one, even though it's higher proof is a little more brittle. Yeah. Yeah, I can and I wonder that. if it's that rye added to the grain. I wonder if it really is column still. And it's it stripped be. out some of the body. Yeah. Um. I wonder if what their stills are like. Do they have like a true column and a true pot? Or do they do like, yeah, it's like a hybrid where you can flip the columns or not? I've, I've only uh, seen a couple of pictures. I've actually requested to get some video and some information about the distillery because I plan on doing a rundown of all right. the point stuff. Um, so I'm actually gonna like, you know, try some production quality to my video this time and actually add in some <laughs> some uh, a video or footage anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the distillery. Um, can't, can't get by trying to be like Ralphie anymore. It doesn't work in, in, the, in whiskey too, man. That, there's only one Ralphie. Only one Ralphie. There's only one Ralphie. It's like it. trying to replicate Mr. Rogers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like a but like a cranky Mr. Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> the, the man knows his stuff. Man. He's he's uh, he's next. Oh, he's brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. So these guys right now, um, they have a bunch of different expressions. They have. I actually ordered. A artisanal single malt cast drink that's coming as well. So I'm. Oh, curious. nice. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, and they have these. The Have you ever heard of their? You have, I think, one of their uh, double barrels, right? Or you. Have, yeah, yeah. That was one of the other ones I could have brought tonight. I have a double barrel, but I don't know what it is. I didn't really read it before I came in. And then I actually have that smoke one that you were talking about, and I should have grabbed it. It's okay. I'm glad actually that you didn't because I I didn't have it, and then it would have been just you drinking. It what a letdown. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I'm gonna try real quick. Um, the two brewers peated. Yeah. Cool. So I mean, look, First, anybody well, living in the Yukon is already a badass, but anybody living in the Yukon and now making whiskey, I mean, that's some like 
that's some serious level of shit right there. They're doing some they're doing some crazy stuff. And actually these guys are very comparable because they're both like newer distilleries. I think two brewers is they they start two brewers started as doing beer, then then went into uh doing like whiskey because it was like for fun kind of thing. Right. Um, <laughs> as one does in the US. Well, they basically made enough money doing beer that they didn't need to do whiskey, but they wanted to do whiskey, right? right. So that's kind of how it went down. Um, and they're doing some really cool stuff. They bottle, or sorry, they barrel about 48 barrels a year. So not right. a huge production. Um, but I think they're only bottling, if I'm not mistaken, uh, half of that or just over half of that. Well, this is 12, release 12. That's a peated, right? They have yeah, the it's a peated. It doesn't say what the grain is. Um, I mean, I mean, it's malt. I mean, it doesn't say what the like. Is it a specialty malt or? Yeah, yeah. Dribs and Drams is uh, saying he's bringing as much uh, production value to his channel as he can, buddy. Preach it to the choir, man. <laughs> Go look at my first five years of, of whiskey reviews, and you'll see what. Uh, like the only reason anything that I've ever been a part of. If it ever looked good, it was because of Rex. I don't know anything about video. I just started, like, I I, I basically had to teach myself because, um, actually, you were in the crowd on, on the night that I had my buddy uh, Monty from uh, Six Gen and Rock and Roll. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were in the live that night, and he was, um, before, like, when things had calmed down in Ontario with COVID, he was coming to my house filming my videos editing my videos uh he like music was him all right. the, uh, the intro all that stuff was him and he's he's awesome at it um but i mean it, like we're in lockdown now so it's basically right. impossible so I, i'm like i i can't not do the stuff that steve was doing right up at point, so i gotta i gotta step up my game so you i had set to some standards yeah so the last <laughs> bunch have been me and I, I'm trying. I'm trying to keep up with him, but I don't know. Uh, it'll it'll be a bit of a learning curve. What do you do? You have the two brewers in front. Of, you have the peated too. I don't have the peated, unfortunately. I have the uh, an innovative. So they have four different uh, kinds. They have their standard single malt. Then they have the peated versions. They have their innovated series, and, and then the special they special finishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, this one is innovative. Forty six percent. This is. Similar to the one that we just had from Shelter Point, but it's it's all it's malted rye and other malts. It says right. So man, this, this one is cucumbers and melon with almost yeah. like a green grape, and uh, and the peat that I'm looking for is buried so far back that I can barely even smell it. Their cuts must have been really narrow on this. Yeah, I, I find that that's the like the, their cuts are super narrow in general. Like you could tell they're getting like the hearts of the hearts, and then um, their peat is more on the palate than on the nose. Yeah, it's almost um, asparagusy, like like roasted asparagus. So apparently they source their peated malt, um, malted barley, uh, from Scotland. So that's so how Baird's. Another thing, I'm being willing to bet everything. It's just Baird's heavily peated that's the same thing that anybody in the u.s well not everybody but typically if someone says we got scottish peated barley the big bears like the biggest peated barley producer coming out of scotland because yeah. uh, it's like reasonably priced and you can still get it in the u.s um i even know brewers that are using bears you know for like rock beer style german smoked beers oh but um yeah i'm not tasting the same as our bears so I wonder if that's a yeast thing, right? Um, like yeah. You said in there, and I kind of get that same kind of melony note from Shelter Point. Right. Once they share a yeast strain, I, I don't know if that's true, and I'm just yeah. Guessing. Who knows? The um the trippy thing to me always about distilling, especially in a pot still. I mean, this is true now, but your cuts on a pot still, you can peat something so long that it's like chewing on a smoke chunk when you chew it right but when you distill it if you cut narrow enough all of those phenolic low chain right they're all in the tails 
or like oh. the low heart cuts. Like, so you have to go lower into the heart to get to the smoke because that's that where it all lives. And so you can actually peat something at astronomical levels and then cut narrow enough, you basically get rid of it. <laughs> wow. And so you have to really, if you really want a smoked whiskey, you've got to really ride the cut train down further than you might want to. But yeah. then what I've found is that if you do that, you have to be willing to age it long enough for the thing, other things you collected to smooth out a I little bit. Otherwise, it's really funky. Mm. And if you want to know what that tastes like, like wide cut, really young, it's Kilomen. Okay. Right. It, it's a. It's not a super narrow. It's low enough to get actual smoke, but young, and so you get this like really brash, you know, meaty kind of smoky note with all these other things along with it. That's super interesting. I didn't know that about the cuts, and I didn't know that that would impact it that much. So then, when do they measure the ppm? Are they measuring it? See, in my the ones I've read about, they're measuring it on the grain. Okay. So right. That would make sense for Octomore, I think. Because yeah, because but what's funny about that is it's true. Like yeah, you can have the like the most heavily peated grain on the planet, but if you cut narrow enough, it's gonna be less smoky than Lafroig, <laughs> right? Yeah, like I mean. Octomore, I've never had an Octomore that tastes medicinal or like you're always getting that like heavy barbecue like uh, style of smoke that everybody yeah, like. which is the, which is great, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. But then they say it's a like hundred and whatever some odd ppm, and you're like, what? Like that that Lafroy cash that I had is forty ppm, and it's right. way more peated. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, but so these guys are sourcing their peated barley to brewers. Shelter Points currently using uh, peated, cas peated casks from Lafroy. Uh, oh, so, so peated cask finish. We yeah. bought some Lafroy barrels, four of them. They're they're like quarter, like smaller barrels, right? Um, and they were old. I think John had to um, like soak them in a tank of water. What, like before we even tried to fill them with water to get them hydrated enough to where they weren't just leaking like a complete sieve, right? But um, they really still added something. Like we're tasting what we put into there and it's yeah. distinct. Like you can taste it. That that finish is no joke. Wow. Yeah, I, I wonder, and how long would you say it needs to be in there to get that kind of, I don't know. I think our stuff has been in there now for, oh man, John and Em are going to kill me. I can't remember the age. I think it uh, it was the Island New Make that we put in there. I can't remember how long, maybe three or four months. That's a good, that's a blind guess. I think John, if he's, I don't know, sometimes John watches these. If he's watching, he can tell you exactly how long they are. Um, but not long. And you can already tell compared, because we put the same New Make spirit into like eight things. And so when we compare the other things to the Lafroig barrels, you can absolutely tell that they're totally different. I mean, they're, they're still obviously the same source thing, but they're totally different flavor profiles. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, uh, so I think, I'm not sure if it's the smoke point um, that they're aging from birth uh, mm. in, in that Lafroig cask. So, right. Um, and I do know that they bought like 128 casks from Lafroig or something like that. Wow. Yeah, they have already like 2,000 barrels or something like that. Like right. Wow. Yeah, they, that's they, awesome, they're, man. They're I think waiting. we have, I think we have like 50. <laughs> and, and that's probably like the norm or like a, a newer. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, Balcona's I think crossed the like eight to nine thousand plus barrel range at some point. Yeah. I think they're even more than that now, but yeah, you have to get pretty big and craft before you're really ringing that hammer. Yeah, and and I think like I think that's the goal for Shelter Point. Like they want to be a big player in the game, and honestly, based on what I've tried so far, I honestly think they can be because yeah, every I've I've poured this blind like a bunch of these blind for a bunch of different guys, and I'm getting like 18 year old scotch. Oh yeah, no, you they're know? pinging all the scotch notes. I mean, except yeah. for that. Except for the one that I just tried, that yeah. was not as scotchy. But the yeah. very first one, which I'm actually going to return to the first one right now because that single malt 
was my favorite thing. This two brewers peated is is okay. It's a little too uh, vegetal. Like the nose, I really love. The palate is a little too vegetal. Yeah. For my preferences, but I'm gonna return to that shelter single malt because damn if it's not delicious so the two brewers i i've had a smoky two brewers so far two of them actually um one was finished in sherry for two years and also had some pork casks incorporated in it and it was a smoky one uh so uh, sorry peated one um and that one is really good it's batch 23 i think or mm -hmm. released and then the release 19 is also peated really good so right. i think that better because i think what you say you had a, a 12 yeah so i think they are getting better 12, i have 12 and 13 um i didn't drink the 13 but it's right here and it is it's got the box checked for classic classics yeah that's probably just a regular single malt i think yeah and um maybe i should try that one i i guess i should have just kept trying <laughs> whiskey throw <laughs> on me with another daniel <laughs> <laughs> oh, bastard. Okay, so Throttle, are you drinking the original Longmorn or the new purple branded Longmorn 16? Because if it's the new purple one, I'm not jealous. It's still, <laughs> it's still a good whiskey. It's still delicious whiskey. Um, and I, honestly, you might even argue it's more refined and, and luxurious, but it's not the original. That, but that's not why everybody loved that Longhorn, right? It's, yeah, it's like, you know, to me, the original, uh, well, how would you describe it? It's got like a meaty, almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's this like when you hear a band live and they're really amazing and they're kind of raw. Mm -hmm. And then you get the album and it's overproduced. Yeah. <laughs> and, yep. and it's just too polished and too clean. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I did, um, so one of the focuses of my buddy uh, Monty on his uh, six gin and rock and roll is he's bringing in indie bands, mm. um, indie band every review and, and letting them feature their music, which uh, he's doing an awesome job with. Oh, um, great. Yeah. Really cool. So yeah, I'm musicians more than ever right now, who's all their live music venues died overnight. Yeah. That needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely a, uh, a cool thing that he's doing and honestly if you're into gin check him out because he's doing he knows his his shit when it comes to gin for sure so yeah i did but you're right about this um man i, I keep hitting it I, I love it they have a new one this is their newest one called ripple rock it's mm. it's yeah. uh seven i think seven or eight years old eight oh, seven wow. In American oak, and then finished in virgin casks. How old but, is the one I'm drinking? Th that one's got to be five, like a combination of five, six, and seven year old, probably. Yeah, there's no, there's no age statement on it. Yeah, or so if I there think, is, it's small enough that I'm missing it. It says it was a 2017 spring release. Yeah, I think what they've been doing, they keep the same recipe for the artisanal single malt, and they they kind of blend a few different ages in there. Um, but this is basically the artisanal single malt, then finished in a virgin oak cask. Right. Oh, okay. That and bottled sense. at forty-seven, so they gave it another uh, one percent. Um, right. Really, really good stuff. Like it. I, I don't know what it is about single malt and virgin oak, but it makes me wonder why they haven't been doing this for a very long time. Because I love it. I love. I love the virgin oak interaction with with single malt. I think it's yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. So, um, at the at the um, Wizard Academy, are you, are you like bringing out like Shelter Point and letting these guys like try it blind, or how does that work? Like, how would you bring out like a new whiskey? So, so the Wizard Academy is just business school. Um, so we only crack into the whiskey as an after hours hangout session um it's not like a formal thing we do we do a whiskey tasting the first night of any class 
after dinner for anybody who wants to. Um, but we don't typically, we just, we typically do it in Scotland. Um, that's cool. Um, but uh, that's totally different than the whiskey school. The whiskey school, we specifically bring out whiskeys. And so far, we don't really get into real, what I consider to be real Canadian craft until we do level two, where we focus on North American whiskeys specifically. And it gives us a little more bandwidth to explore real, you know, all the Canadian options. In level one, we're sort of doing broad strokes. And so we live in, in the big brands mostly. So you wouldn't really, in the whiskey class, you wouldn't really get to try something like Shoulder Point until level two, as far as a formalized part of the class. Right, but right. when we all hang out and open it up, anytime someone says, I don't like Canadian, I'm like, hang on, yeah. come with me. And then I'll pour them any number of things, uh, you know, and Shelter yeah. Point being one of them. Um, you know, especially if they say they prefer scotch. But um, but I also really love, you know, Letter to Fintry. I, I really like a lot, which is also another British Columbia Okanagan, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. yeah, their Letter to Fintry single mod, I really love that one. Um, nice. I really love the Glen, um, is it Glenora? Glenora, uh, Glen Breton? Yeah, Glen Breton. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah up there in Cape. Uh, yeah. Or in, uh, or not Cape, uh, Island. North of that. <laughs> no, no yeah. School. Nova Scotia, but aren't, they're not on PEI, but they're in Nova Scotia. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, now I'm forgetting. New Brunswick? Yeah. Nova, <laughs> Nova Scotia, I think. No, it is Nova Scotia. I just don't yeah. remember where that. Yeah, I was actually in Nova Scotia and I tried so hard to see if I could get there, but I, I was in the middle northern coast and then straight down to Halifax. And I, I'm a huge fan of Nova Scotia. But um, anyway, so yeah, the, the chance to try things like this is going to be when. We're done with class and we're just hanging out and we're talking whiskey and trying things and exploring. And that's when, that's when you'll get a shot at trying something like this. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's, I guess the right way to do it because they got to understand the bigger players before they can appreciate stuff like this too, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, we still love to just hassle Canadians nonstop. That's never going to end. Yeah, I mean, um, as you would. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's never going to end. We're, I mean, one of the main instructors in level one and all as a is a Canadian, and he's from um, what's the town where um, Shakespeare was born in England? Um, man, I should know this. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's Come on now, a, teacher. <laughs> it's in Ontario, uh, a place named after that place. Come on, yeah, because there's a it's a Canadian town, but it's named after. Yeah. That. Uh, yes. Anyway, no, that's where he lives. Uh, what? It's, it's at the tip of my. Oh, this is the comments are going to give us so much shit for this. Uh, uh, um, um, yes, yes, yes. Stratford. That's that's exactly it. Yeah. So there's in Can. That's where he's from in Canada, and um, and uh, so we nonstop when we get to the Canadian portion of whiskey and level one where we're talking about Canadian whiskey. I, we just give them so much shit, but it's mostly because they're so bad at distributing the good stuff to us. And, really and maybe, maybe that's the wrong word. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're doing exactly what they intend, it's which so is good. just offloading their shit onto <laughs> us. Yeah. And so I keep telling people, it's like, what if the only scotch you ever tried your whole life was Johnny Walker Red? Yeah. And that's all you could get. Right, but you'd have a really low opinion of Scotch yeah. as a category. You'd be like, eh, it's fine, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so, but that's what happens in Canada. We get all the, you know, Collingwood and the, you know, the budget crown and the, <laughs> yeah. And but then you go into Canada or you get anywhere close to where someone distributes, and you get to try, like even the big brands are doing things like the special edition Wisers, like dissertation, and yeah. you know all these like fancy Wisers releases, and they're great whiskey. But we never get those <laughs> bastards. You know, it's it is unfortunate. Uh, I don't know, and I, I want to blame it on production, but it can't be that. Um, it's it's I think a little bit of laziness, uh, complacency. Um, Crown Royal has the ability to blow the socks off of all of North America if they want to. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. 
they can own they can own Canada tomorrow if they wanted to, and, yeah. and everybody in the U.S. Oh. would be like, "What the hell just happened?" Because yep. they have been in that in that warehouse that like it's unbelievable, and like they're what they've been doing it for so many damn years that they they know exactly what they're doing, but they they love money too much. They just love money too much. <laughs> that's, no, that's well, the that's the part of their Scottish heritage. <laughs> they're just too. <laughs> Like no, we gotta make a buck here. We gotta figure this shit out. Maybe, I, you know, I don't know, but uh, there was a good question, and we are approaching the hour mark. I want to get to it. Um, in touch mortgages. Uh, my buddy Anthony uh, mentioned it earlier, and it was, uh, "What is your? Uh, you don't have to give me a specific whiskey, but what? Like, l- let's go with that. Let's go with what is your favorite whiskey or the best whiskey you've tried." And if you can't answer that, then at least, like, what what is your preference when it comes to whiskey? Where do you lean usually? Okay, so I, that's such – I mean, you know. Um, dude, Joel, the difference is Canada has the ability to distribute because I can get Canadian whiskey here with no effort. The Texas <laughs> problem is the ability to make enough that we can distribute that far out. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, but I get, but I appreciate the ball busting. Um, <laughs> so answering my favorite whiskey, I just as try as I might, I can't answer. I can never answer that question. I mean, it's like if you're a real musician, name your favorite band. It's like, well, damn. Like, are we? I mean, how do you compare? You know, uh, Radiohead. You know, with shit, the kind of blue or Miles Davis. You know, it's like. Those are two totally different. Which one's your favorite? Well, I don't know. Am I in the mood for kind of blue or not? Right. Yeah. So with whiskey, it's sort of like that with me. It's just like, oh, I don't know if I can pick my favorite. Now, if I had to pick a preferred to try to answer the question as asked, if I had to pick a preferred category, it tends to be the more hefty pot still, not overly sweet and candied. Um, and leaning towards smoke and heft, yeah. uh, malted whiskey. Yeah. And so I've had, uh, mostly it tends to be scotch, but I've had a shit ton of North American whiskey that meets that. And I've had a few Irish that meet that. Um, I tend to default to scotch because it's just, it's so easy yeah. to it, find that. But yeah, and it's accessible. Exactly. Uh, but as I've gotten to try more and more craft in America, it's gotten harder and harder to keep going only back to scotch. I mean, am I, the selection that starts to show up just of American whiskeys, I mean, just the Westlands and the Balconis and the, honestly, even the ASW, which I recently discovered, the Atlanta guys who are making some amazing whiskey. Uh, yeah. Virginia, I mean, Jesus. There's sure. so many good people doing malt, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Stranahan's doing a good job with malt as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So it, it's it's going to be malt. It's going to be leaning towards smoke. And if there's not smoke, leaning towards body and and salt and brine. and Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely with you. Uh, that's, that's where I lean as well. Um, if I had to choose one, it's probably not a, a secret on this channel. It's... This uh, Gordon McPhail uh, Mortlock that I had. Uh, oh wow. yeah, it was unbelievable. Like it, it, it was like dark as like as night. Um, it had a nice little smoke to it. It had this like right. moon, you know to it. Um, it was like thirty one years old. Nineteen eighty seven was the the um, distillate date. Um, just stupid good. Like, Man, that's so weird. It's, I, this is when I know I'm getting old. That a whiskey that's thirty-one years old was made in a year that I can clearly remember. <laughs> like not like my early days, but like no, I've got really I've got real memories in nineteen eighty seven. Well, I would never have guessed, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was three in nineteen. 19- yeah, I was not. I was not three. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that just means I could have babysat you, right? I mean, there's always a spin, a positive spin. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you brought all the whiskey, I mean, that, that's yeah. Well, you know, that's how you get the kid to go to sleep early. 
I, it's funny. I'm going to get arrested one day because sometimes my son walk, comes into this room. He's five years old. And oh, yeah. he'll, like, he'll be like, what's up, everybody? I'm, this is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. And like, he's talking to nobody. And nobody like, there's nothing filming him. But uh, uh, there was two. There's so many stories like that with like YouTubers. I think it was Brushwood. Our friend Brian, who was, he was saying goodnight to his daughter one night. And she was like, I think she's like four or five. He was like, all right, good night, babe. Good night, honey. And she's like, good night, dad. Like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh no, what have we done? <laughs> because that's their language, right? Like that's, yeah. we love YouTube. Like, that's what they're going to grow up on. We grew up on Saturday cartoons. They grew, they're growing up on YouTube. You know what I mean? So they really are. Yeah, that language. I'm going to finish and we can drag this just a little bit. I'm going to finish with one that just happened to be sitting next to me. And I'm going to brag on a friend of mine, um, Reed Huddleston. Okay. Reed Huddleston, you'll never know because he's never going to go on YouTube and do shit. And he's never going to really do social media for real, even though I think he has an Instagram. He created the whiskey program at Deep Ellum in Dallas. And um, he's a graduate of Harriet Watt, the Scottish Distilling and Brewing Institute program he might be the smartest whiskey person i know wow period that's crazy. Uh, uh the first time we ever hung out so uh, we're just the same vibe it was like meeting a brother that i'd i'd not met yet right we i was visiting distilleries and i visited dallas and then we were gonna go hang out with the iron guys and he was like, hey, can I come? I was like, sure, hop in. And then he ended up crashing my hotel room and we stayed up until like three in the morning talking about like whiskey spreadsheets and books. And like he was distilling at deep at the time he brought out a spreadsheet for his distillation runs. And it was like a hundred line items down and like a couple hundred across. And it tracked everything from like barometric pressure at wow. the beginning and end of a run. Wow, that's awesome down to the day right of like everything he had ever done it's like it's tuesday the 14th the pressure is this the humidity is this the temperature is this at the end of the distillation run the temperature and humidity as like every fucking thing guys astounding and um, he recently left there and went to montana he's now at head frame um spirits in montana where they make stills and sell to other people but they also have their own distillation their own whiskey and their own products um and he made this whiskey that when they just released it's called they called it lead belly um which is you know the blues player who's from who has a lot of roots in the dallas area and it is an irish style whiskey in texas so it's a huge percentage of unmalted barley but a hundred percent barley pot uh pot still so it's irish whiskey right it's pot yeah. still irish whiskey yeah. but made in texas um and this one's 22 months old and son of a bitch it is malty and like imagine if you added like a really malt forward vibrant fruit note uh, with a ch uh, with a milk chocolate to wow. red breast. That's awesome. So, he that just age? did an astounding job. It's dark. And yeah, Look. no, that's that's twenty two months in Texas in full size barrels too. By the way, right? And I think used, if I'm not mistaken, I think they did only used barrels to try to replicate the Irish style. And look, still look at that mother. That's insane. <laughs> But I it's think, really good. I think the only solution to keeping whiskey for 10 years in a barrel in Texas is like you have to get the most tired cask you can ever find. Yeah, like when, basically when Canada thinks they're done with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll, the we'll, we'll take it. We'll, we'll do <laughs> one more run. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Get up the Crown Royal because they, their 75th used barrel is uh, ready to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need our casks to be at least in the 30s. <laughs> before before we'll fill whiskey yeah yeah man that's just so insane like but seriously 22 months man that's crazy that looks awesome i i really need to source a bottle of that because that looks nuts yeah i had to mail one to read in montana so a couple things before we sign out 
Uh, I have a question for you, but it's going to follow. Um, guys, if you want Shelter Point, Liquor Lodge is doing a 10% off promotion tonight. And they're actually already well-priced, in my opinion, uh, on Liquor Lodge. But 10% off, um, that's www.liquorlodge.ca. Um, whiskey 6, that's it. Whiskey, the word without the E, uh, 6 the number, not the word. Uh, that's the promo code you can get. 10% off of these beauties or whatever they have in stock. Heck yeah. yeah. Um, but before we go, I want to know what your, I know that we just talked about favorites and that sucks to be asked that question and stuff like that. No, no, it's a fair question. <laughs> well, actually I'm going, I'm going books here. I'm going books. Cause you, you talked about books a few times. I'm, <laughs> I'm a big like book geek. Um, so yeah, you, you got to tell me what your favorite book is, or at least favorite book genre, if you can't do book. Oh, just in general, it doesn't have to be whiskey. Let's, let's talk books. Oh, let's, yeah. dude. Okay. Yeah. So I, you can't see it, but look through my living room to the other side. That's just one Ooh. section. <laughs> yeah. You have me beat for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's just one. That's about half. No, it's less than half of that. Anyway, no, no, no. I'm about as nerdy book nerd as it can get. And I only, almost only read fiction. I, I The only nonfiction I read is whiskey. And it still takes me like four months to finish a nonfiction book and like two days to finish a fiction book. Awesome. I love fiction. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I lean to whodunits. Okay. Love awesome. a good whodunit, right? right. Uh, everything from Agatha Christie for the early stuff um, and, you know, Holmes and, you know, Doyle, all the way to um, Michael Connolly, who I think is like the single greatest cop crime fiction writer in the history of, of that genre. You ever dip into any uh, David Baldacci? Yeah, yeah. I, I've, got a, I've got two of his over there, and they just didn't quite catch me the way that Connolly did. Like, Connolly is so visceral yeah, and, and visual, you know? Yeah. And yeah. and Baldy kind of he takes a slow roll into things, you know. Yeah, he's um, all, he's all like seven part series and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I love that, but I also I'm going to give you two more. My favorite, right. like, just chill the fuck out and, and stop thinking and enjoy life is P.G. Woodhouse. No greater humor author in the history than P.G. Woodhouse. All right. And cool. and Jeeves and you know all the different yeah, awesome. but my guilty pleasure, like, hate to admit it, but kind of really dig it and can read one in about two hours is Louis L'Amour, oh, okay. the West the Western writer. <laughs> all right. I mean, and they're so cheesy. It's like it's like a formula, and you just like fill in the characters into the gaps. <laughs> but it's 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 an easy like, no brainer. Fly the- through it. Yeah, that, that's good. That's awesome. Yeah, but I love – oh, yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> I'm more of a, a fantasy sci-fi guy, to be honest with you. But uh, Oh, tell me. So I haven't gotten a ton into sci-fi. So the earliest stuff when I was in high school was all the Harry Harrison stuff where I really fell in love with, like, the Stainless Steel Rat series. And, and like, um, and he did the whole West of, is it West of Eden, um, which was, like, what if the um, – what if li- the uh, what are lizards? They're not uh, primates. They're the part of the um, reptiles. Yeah, the reptile. What if the reptile category of animals actually became the dominant yeah, species yeah, yeah. on Earth with full consciousness and full and humans stayed at the level of like barely ahead of monkeys? You know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. there's a whole series like that, and it was pretty amazing. And then, you know, of course, you've always got, you know, Douglas Adams and shit like that. But what's a really good sci-fi that's, now that you know what I like, that's a good gateway into great storytelling? Okay, so I, I, I'm not sure if I can uh, appease that that type of genre. I don't know if I'm asking the right thing. Um, but one of my favorite authors, um, and this is not my favorite book, but since we're talking sci-fi, uh, Dark. Have you ever heard of Blake Crouch? He wrote. No. Uh, he were, uh, wrote um, uh, Wayward Pines. It's a okay. TV. Show. Um, I think. Anyway, um, this one is Dark Matter. Okay. This is a 
really really cool book another one that he wrote is uh, recursion those are two okay. like sci-fi recommendations for you uh, that i love so um, for you where does ray bradbury fall on the level of like is he truly as great as i love him or is he just like eh, he's all right he's all no, right he's he's one of the the legends like okay um, good because i love ray bradbury yeah he's i mean the legend. martian chronicles is a book i'd never get tired of reading over and over and over yeah no he's he's definitely a legend i mean um but there's some like philip k dick i mean like those are the guys that like you can't really touch but I, I, we're really geeking out over here oh we really are this is no longer a whiskey conversation but it's, uh, yeah. um but if you if you've ever dabbled into fantasy i will give you one more book recommendation uh or two sorry um but i'm gonna be quick about it yeah this here he's american um patrick rothfuss the name of the wind You're, okay yeah i've heard that one no no actually that's the one that everyone's like oh you got to read the name of the wind like it's just like as yeah. soon as someone well, mentions fantasy it's like oh you read the name of the wind <laughs> <laughs> one of those it, it is one of those um and and since you have the wizard academy like it's about wizards so, yeah, i know <laughs> what have you read any of the robin hobb books i uh, know i haven't actually Okay, because I've got several people in my life who are seriously obsessed with Robin Hobb, and I've been trying to get into those, but they're so heavy. Yeah. They're so dark. <laughs> and they're, you know, it's like I get halfway through and I'm like, oh, this is just like soul wrenching. And I'm having a hard time doing it. Like, my, my real life is hard enough. I don't, <laughs> I know. I don't need my function to also be emotionally traumatizing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so definitely, I, I would recommend Name of the Wind. It's Name it's, of the Wind. All right, I'm pretty also, sure Zach Smith uh, or the Vice Chancellor at Wizard Academy, and uh, Whiskey Smiths. Um, uh, he is the one who told me about Name of the Wind. Yeah, Name of the Wind is epic. And it, we, we've been waiting for the last book of the series for longer than people have been waiting for the last book of uh, Game of Thrones. But um, <laughs> the, the last one. We part with for tonight before i let you go is oh no no we're talking my language right here this is great brendan sanderson uh the way of kings okay uh brendan sanderson is in my opinion um the stephen king of like epic fantasy type writing like he he just right. sell book after book after book i don't know how the hell he does it uh obviously it's his full-time job but uh he's probably you know, like <laughs> five books a year um and they're all like two thousand pages like they're all monsters oh, jesus okay yeah. but anyway name of the uh sorry the way of kings um really really good book and the second book which is also you're gonna email uh, me these right because i'm never gonna remember from, okay we'll do that please, please do <laughs> but, um yeah guys uh i don't know if you've heard of shelter point but if you haven't you did now um we like it i really yeah. like it I added a little water to that first one and it really brought out all the grain notes. Yeah. 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 I don't, I guess cause it's malted rye. I don't get a ton of like what I come to expect from a rye, I guess you can say. Right. Right. Um, but yes, I definitely get like, um, that like grainy, like, uh, I, I want to call it harsh, but I like it. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know why. Yeah. I, and you're, you're talking about the cask one, right? The artisanal cask. Uh, yeah, the cast drink, the artisanal. Yeah, I went back to the single malt. Yeah, the single malt I really like. I think it's one of the one of my favorite like go tos right now. Um, but I do give the slight edge to this Ripple Rock. Like mm. I love, love, love the Ripple Rock. Whoever's sending you your shelter point, get them to send you a Ripple Rock because. Oh yeah. yeah. No, please. No, so I, I saw. So I just pulled up the comments because I hadn't looked at them the whole time. I saw first Phil asked about the shelf so here's the thing you want to see something this is about as nerdy as nerdy gets let's let's do it let's, let's are you ready let's, for it let's ride so i'm a huge fan of well wrong shoulder i'm doing the mirror image thing smws yes right so i've got probably 40 50 smws bottles in here and, and then over here i've just got some basic scotch i think it's balvaney balvaney Good Morangy, Oban. And then yeah. these are just like random world things and bottles that are tall. <laughs> and 
and then there's other random Texas shit down here and Irish over here. Uh, scotch up here behind this, there's like, you know, the Lafroigs and the Ardbegs and the Kilomen and things like that. Yeah. But SMWS, I've developed with a few people in my life. There's about three of us. We developed our own notes for um, SMWS. Oh, nice. Because the, tr the problem with SMWS is when you've got all these bottles and you get new ones, when you go back, it's hard to remember whether you liked it or not, right? Because you're like, oh, do I like Ardbeg Black? Yes, right? Okay. But do I like a bottle that's called A Big Tropical Adventure? I don't remember. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's possible to know. So the trick is, how do you develop your own notes? And so when, now, for the last about six months, uh, me and, and then two other people have been working our way through these bottles one by one. And using a pen, I'm going to grab one. Using a pen, we have added our own notes <laughs> to let us remember what we think about something. And I've got, I'll show you two. This is fun for me and may not be fun for anybody else, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, so for example, you've got foraging on the forest floor, right? Yeah. A 12 year old, and um, I can't remember which story this is, but it's Highland. And here's our own personal notes. Now, what this means is if you see a straight line, it means it's good, but I wouldn't go searching for it, but I wouldn't be disappointed if it got put on the table. Okay. It's like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Right? Um, however, if you add water, then I really love it. And there's my initial, D. Okay. Awesome. Right? So everybody involved thinks, yeah, that's, that's fine. But then I added water, and I'm the only one who thinks it really jumped up a level. Everybody else still feels the same. Everyone with a SMWS collection now is taking that idea. <laughs> right. So now this one, that's the nose is really great. <laughs> it's a <the> nose. <laughs> yeah. However, it doesn't taste that great. It's either a question mark or an actual down arrow, which arrow. means like, ah, I don't think I like this one too. Uh, two of us who were like, nope, right? <laughs> <laughs> However, the nose is wonderful. <laughs> and then you've got my favorite one, which got hidden up here, which is not only my favorite one recently, but my favorite name of a recent bottling. That, that which quote it, was a Dalmore, according to Eric Waite. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The one that I first one that I did. 13 is a Dalmore. Yeah, that makes sense. This does not taste like any Dalmore you've ever had in your entire life. It's well, amazing. That a cast strength Dalmore it doesn't happen very often. And it's not like overly sherry either. Um, this one, tintillated by ten tickles. <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's actually Coolila. Okay, nice. Uh, Nine-year-old Coolila. And on our notes, notice that we put an arrow oh. up, which means absolutely hell yes. This, is the this one. one wins, right? And this then, <laughs> and then if you if you add water, one of us really loves it. Okay. With awesome. water. Like that. Yeah. So I'm gonna have tintillated by ten tickles. Yeah, you're not that guy. You have to you have to try some of that. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, um, first fill that helps you out. That honestly, that's actually a really good idea because I can imagine it getting difficult to keep track of like I, i've always had a few smws bottlings but never enough to like you know have to worry that it's not going to be finished before i need to <laughs> right but that um that's a great strategy I, I like that yeah i think i need to uh just like practice something similar just with all my bottles because i well yeah that's the problem is like even if you take notes no one has any energy to go back and look through their folders and be like, what did I write about this? Yeah. Never. Right. But if it's written on the bottle and you have your own shortcut hieroglyphics. Exactly. Then you can pick up a bottle and instantly be like, what did I think about? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's, you're onto something. I think you could probably publish that because. <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> whiskey hieroglyphics. <laughs> just sell like whiskey vault stickers. And yeah, just this, shorthand. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> just this is good. Uh, it's an up arrow. Put up arrow. Uh, the up arrow can be like you know, just all up arrows, and then just use it wisely. Right. Just side, yeah. downward, whatever. Yeah, you can't. The the trick is to not get overly nuanced. Cause it's endless. Like you just end up with all these chicken scratch all over it. So you, yeah. you gotta like broad brush it a little bit. Yeah. No, I like that. You break it down to nose palette and then do I like it? Yes. Do I not like it? Or somewhere in between. I yeah, like it. absolutely. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, these guys know where to find you, but um, maybe you can share some insight as to like what's coming up in the next little while that they need to look out for something important. Um, honestly, just we're doing some interesting shit, uh, but it's mostly only going to show up on the Patreon um, as far as like whiskey releases. Uh, most of our stuff never makes it past the Patreon. So it's hard to get people's attention up for it. Uh, tomorrow we're doing this new thing. There's this app called Stereo. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I only just heard of it this week, but you can download the app and it's like a radio show and it's a conversation between two people. And Rex and I are going to be doing that tomorrow at like one o'clock. And so, nice. but you just download the app and we're just going to be talking. And there's these like icons of us talking while we just talk about random shit. And you can actually like record a voice question and then submit it and it'll pop up like, oh, we got a caller and you know, that kind of a thing. It's like a revolution so, podcast. It's like a yeah. Like, they're trying to launch and get going, and they're new, and they're trying to get some legs. And they reached out to us and asked if we'd be willing to do two or three things with it. And so yeah. we're giving it a shot tomorrow. Uh, awesome. So that's tomorrow, one o'clock Central Standard, and the app is called Stereo. And nice. uh, yeah, cool man. Uh, so guys, download that app, Stereo. Um, if you don't know, uh, you've been hiding for a very long time. Um, welcome back to society. This is Daniel from the Whiskey Vault. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Rob. I appreciate this, man. It's been fun. No, it was it was a lot of fun actually, and um, I I'm definitely down to do this again whenever you're ready. Maybe we'll talk about two brewers a little bit more in depth next time. Maybe we'll talk about books. Or books. <laughs> And he will have at least three people in that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> let's just make it a let's just make it a phone call. There's no point doing it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I don't care. If we're if we're gonna talk about it, we might as well do it on. on Look, just come over. Just fly <laughs> down here. It's fine. We'll read some books. <laughs> All right. Stay on the line. I'm gonna say good night to everybody. Thank you very much. Cheers, everybody. Uh, Thank you, Daniel, for having me on, or for coming on, actually. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes. You're always welcome on your show, Rob. I'm always welcome <laughs> on my show. Um, it was a pleasure. No, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, really appreciate it. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank so, you, uh, sir. We'll do this again. Cheers, buddy. Uh, cheers, everyone.